Alrighty, how's it going everybody? Good morning, my name is Mark and um, I wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to do a breakdown of the console. Um, so my name is Mark. Uh, thanks everyone for watching the uh, the channel. Uh, and I, I really do appreciate that everyone liked the content and uh, and so forth. My name is Mark. I call the channel Mark Music Place for those that are new that are just tuning in. This is their first time watching the videos. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Definitely hit the bell. It'll let you know when I'm going to post a video. And also, definitely write some comments. And the comments really help the channel. And uh, also, uh, thumbs up. All that helps. So, and of course, it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. That's the great thing about channels on YouTube. They're all free. So, with that being said, I did a video on how you would use an analog console in your studio. I also did one on how you would route. Now, what's going to happen is there's going to what's going to happen is there are going to be people that are that are going to want to use an analog console. But the 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 thing that you're going to see on old analog consoles, let's say you can even score a very one of those large let's say you had the room and you want to get one of those large big professional large format consoles uh neve uh 8038 or um 8048 or 8058 or whatever or even a, a neve vr console or maybe an, an uh, api legacy or or you might even see an ssl 4,000 or something or 6,000 or 9,000 J or whatever 6,000 G or 4,000 E or whatever Consoles like that what's gonna what's usually what's confusing to a lot of people on consoles like that is the terminology Because even this mid 90s board like this manager your desk the, the deal is that all the consoles that were made most analog consoles have really really stopped being becoming popular to make around the 90s into the 2000s there's only been there's only a few companies that still produce analog consoles but they're usually small consoles they, they don't give you a whole lot of channels um, and so forth because most of the time no one ever thought that the way we would do music would be Recording into DAW, DAWs, and using plugins and and using the DAW with and all that became really really popular only in the last twenty five years, or around in there, going coming out of the nineties into the two thousands and up. That's when and plugins and plugins had really become really really good into the last, I would say, ten years. So this is actually music wise, as long as we've been doing music and recording, what we do and how we do it today is actually really, really new. It's very new. So, but it's like anything else, it's going to change and make the new stuff is going to become the standard and all the old stuff is going to fade away like anything in life. It's kind of like um, one more example would be or a couple more examples would be like typewriters where you had to put an ink cartridge and slot put an actual piece of paper in the typewriter with the ink cartridge and you would type out letters and that's and you would mail that so with internet and computers like Microsoft and all that that eliminated the the point to even need a typewriter you know stuff like that touchscreen and the modern cash register stuff like that that eliminated them old push button, single push button that had numbers like one, a zero, 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 and all that. You had to push, and you had to add it in. You had to literally add as you were, when someone went, to, you know, 150 years ago, when they went to a um, a country store or whatever, they went to a grocery store, they, they had buttons. It was a big old cash register that had buttons and had numbers on it. You had to literally add. It would say two, two, three. You had to do that. And these numbers are these numbers will pop up in this little window whatever you just did and then finally when you add hit add and all that adding would add all the numbers that you did it would add 
and it give you a final toe. Ching, ching, ching. It will do that. Well, modern not technology doesn't require you to do that. The same thing with your smartphone. Now with smartphones, who's buying calculators no more? You got a calculator right on your phone. You don't have to buy calendars. Most people used to buy a calendar and put it on a desk. So I don't want to waste a ton of it, uh, time on talking about the old school, but the old school. So now what's going to happen is going back to the consoles, you're going to hear things like Q mixes. Cues. So you're going to see buttons on, on an old console that says something like Q. Um, well, Q is basically another way name for headphone mix. Okay, but there are some people that are still using that terminology, so it's confusing the people that are trying to learn, uh, and they watch these videos and they'll see something that the guy, the engineer, tomorrow will come and send a Q mix. He's I'm gonna send a headphone mix, or uh, you'll see some older consoles and like this console has actual bus group faders on it. There's actual bus group faders on it. Old consoles, how they made group bus faders, they had to use, they had to sacrifice channels. And you had to route to a channel and made that a bus. So all the channels on the console would go to, let's say you're, let's say you had one of those large consoles that had like 48 channels on it, an old one, right? What they would do is the bus routing would have one through 48. So they would say, okay, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to make channels 45, 46, 47, 48 bus channels, all right, or whatever. Or I'm going to use the last, you know, I'm going to use channels 33 through 44 as bus channels. So you would have one through, you would have one through 32 would be um your recording and mixing channels monitoring and all that channels 1 through 32 so you have 32 inputs 32 returns all on the same channels to mix through 33 through 48 when then you can use those and they will turn those into buses so there will be buttons at the top and you would actually say okay this is going to go bus I want drums and all my drums that go to buses, I'm going to turn channels 33 and 34 into bus channels. And so you go click, click, and so you would sign whatever channels that were your drums. Let's say your drums were channels 1 through 10. You would hit 31, 1 through 10, you would hit 33 and 34 on a bus assignment. Bus assignment matrix, right? It's just the buttons with individual channel buttons. That would now reroute all the outputs instead of it going to the master out. It would then go to those channels. Then those channels would come to the master out. That's how they would do that. Um, consoles don't have, now newer consoles, you don't have to do that. Uh, so you don't have to sacrifice channels to make them bus groups. Um, but you're also going to see nothing on old consoles that say something like echo, echo returns. Nor in your DAW and on the newer mixers, they'd say auxiliaries or aux for short. Aux, auxiliary sends. That's sending to an auxiliary, is another word for alternative channel, a secondary channel, an auxiliary channel, an aux channel. You're seeing the same thing. But on the console, instead of, you know, an auxiliary, you would, sometimes you would have to do the same thing. You would say, okay, I'm going to send auxiliary sent out. You would have to sacrifice a couple more channels for auxiliary returns. Well, newer boards, they don't have auxiliary returns on channels. You would actually have the outputs when you send an auxiliary out on your channel, there's auxiliary returns in the master section that would automatically route to the master bus and allow will allow you to route to the master bus by all you by or you can assign it to other channels or 
group if your console has that in the group then the group would go to the master ultimately everything would eventually route to the master out which is the, called the master bus now you're going to hear other terms you're going to hear these other terms in these consoles let me tilt this a little bit so you can see you know i don't know if you can see the console some uh okay let me tilt that a little bit okay probably should have done that right so now what they've done now they've gotten a little bit smarter in these designs uh, as far as the naming of these consoles in the analog world instead of calling things echo because the reason they would call it echo was the fact that they had to have literal rooms that would echo <laughs> so what they would do is they would send signal out of whatever channels let's say they want to send drums out of that out of the drum all the drums coming out of the channel to a certain part of the console to send it out of the board and they would send it through a speaker in a, in a, in a room the speaker would then send all the drums or whatever into that room the speaker would then all the sound would bounce in the room and then they would have a microphone in there on another channel and that would be recording what it, what the speaker is putting out in that room bouncing that's how you get those echoes that's why they would call it echo um we don't really call it echo anymore we call it reverb so that's why units don't aren't called when you buy like a reverb unit for your rack or whatever or or plug-in or whatever that's why it doesn't it isn't called an echo plug-in it's called a reverb plug-in right so it's the the terminology changes so that's why you're going to get confused you might get a little confused when you're hearing Q and and why won't this this console have any bus channels or why aren't there any you know why is it saying echo return and all that that's why the the technology at the time <laughs> that's what it was called so the um the breakdown now this is because it's a 90s board 90s analog board because 2000 up everybody started really getting into digital but digitals were really more focused on live recording and they started making more audio interfaces where you were just recording through your audio interface um, so the digital mixers were more designed for live purposes that's why they don't have a lot of you know that's why they don't have a lot of inserts and direct outs and all that on mixing on digital mixers they just don't um, because they assumed once the technology started changing, they realized everyone started recording the hard disk recorders. At first, before they, you know, when it was tape, the tape started going to ADAT tape machine, digital tape machines, which were ADATs or Tascams. And then they started going into recording into your computer. And now the computer became the standard. Now the computer is the standard, Mac or PC. It's the standard now. So as the things change, the terminology change. But you got a lot of people that they may be in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s that are still doing this that have a hard time adapting. Another thing um, with analog consoles and another thing with that is this is really super beneficial. You can use it in modern recording if you like you if you like using more virtual instruments, synthesizers, virtual drums, VST drums, VST instruments, plugins and stuff like that. You can still benefit from the sonics of an analog console, but it's not it's not nowhere near as necessary, especially when you're not multi-tracking. So let's put that let's put that out. You don't necessarily need this if you're going to record, and that's the only way you record. In my personal opinion, will it help? It does help. It does it definitely helps. But it's not needed. Now, if you know that the ones that are gonna always, I'm gonna tell you this, with the analog consoles and consoles in general, 
um, if you're watching a lot of studio tour videos, what you will see is majority of the people that are stressing analog consoles, outboard gear, and all the stuff that you normally traditionally have seen in all these big commercial studios and the ones of people that are doing it at home or whatever and these are the ones that are stressing the console not the ones that are not stressing the console I'm talking about the ones that are still stressing the consoles you have to pay attention to the music they do okay most of these people that are stressing this are guitar players or drummers that play that are mostly rock um, you know maybe country or bands bands period they might even want to record orchestras or whatever but most of the time it's going to be where it requires them to mic guitar cabinets drums um, it requires them to multi-track they need 10 12 24 channels or whatever and they're going to record real musicians playing real instruments and that's their preferred method of music and prefer preferred method of recording that's why they that's the biggest people that you're going to see across the internet that's going to stress this because i do a combination of virtual instrument synthesizers as well as real instruments like my trumpet sax I still use bass guitar, I still use acoustic guitar, and I'm definitely going to do vocals. Vocals, even recording vocals does not require a console. It basically only requires a really good preamp. Most of the time your preamps and your audio interfaces are okay, but using an external preamp, like especially a really good one to have, maybe have tubes and transformers or something like that, or at least transformers and discrete op amps and stuff like that, those type of circuits are going to benefit the best for recording vocals. You don't have to use the console for that. Um, so what else? Um, so other than that, on the console, other than that, everything is, is designed to go through channels, then it's designed for you to go through groups if you want to, and then go to the master bus, or you can go for the channels directly to the master bus. It's designed to send auxiliaries out for if you want to send it to additional speakers or you want to send it to uh, reverb units. It has inserts so if you want to use compressors because compressors are designed to affect stuff directly. Reverb and delays are designed to blend with the original source. This is why you send your auxiliaries out whether you're doing it on the console or in your DAW. Reverbs are designed to blend with the unit, and the reason be the reason why you want to do that. I'm checking my time. The reason why you want to not put auxiliaries. Let me um, hit the camera stand. The reason why you want to separate your original signal from the auxiliary re reverb sound is because the source playing in a room. Reverbs are emulating reverb units or plugins are emulating or simulating rooms types of, or, or, or locations or areas that you're playing in like a hall would be a concert hall you know big old concert hall the way the sound reflects in there versus a um, chamber where chambers are nothing but places with really tall ceilings you know uh, plates are nothing but reverbs that bounce between walls um, and so forth there's cathedral type you know like churches and all that and the way churches are built, the way sound balance, that's why they have different reverbs. These are called, you know, ambient rever reverberation sounds in a room that is... So you, you want to have the source blend with that to make it sound like the source is in the room. And they also have settings on reverbs such as delay, pre-delay, and decay. Delay or pre-delay means how fast the signal gets into the unit and how fast the signal between hearing the signal and hearing the reverb affecting the signal is a delay. How fast you want it, you want it to be immediate? A lot of times you make it immediate, that makes it sound like it's in the center of the room. 
Um, a little pre-delay makes it sound like, you know, if you hear buka, buka. That's a pre-delay. You know, so you would have the delay. It means the reverb is going to start microseconds after the signal hits. A lot of times that's if, you know, most of the time that gives you effect of something that's like in the corner room. And you, they, someone hits something, then all of a sudden you can hear the effect of something hitting, hearing a signal in the room, like in the corner, and then this, that, that sound bounces in the room, and it takes it a, a microsecond for your ear to, to register what the signal just did in the room. That's why you put a little pre-delay. The DK is, you don't want it always hanging, hanging like, so you're going to add a DK to cut it off. Uh, sometimes people even put a gate to cut it off immediately. So you hear, and the gate will turn the signal off automatically. That's why you hear gated reverb and things like that. It create all these types of sounds create effects. And and of course a reverb and a delay a delay a reverb is nothing but a fancy long lasting delay. When something delay, delay, the only difference when you hear delays, that just the sound is bouncing in the room. You're hearing that. So, but when you add reverbs on, with delays, you're hearing the bouncing of the sound in the room, and that creates this bouncing effect. Da la 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 Because the sound is bouncing on top of creating the small room or even a large room sound by changing the reverb so you want to put those on separate tracks to blend with the original source you don't want to we don't want to put reverbs on insert on the channel it's going to muddy up the, it's going to muddy it up and also this is how you make this is how you get stereo with to get your signal sounding wider this is why they do that that's why we run reverbs on two separate channels and we pan them one to the left pan to the right so it pans one to the to the left on the left speaker pan to the right speaker to give you a width sound that's how you make the stuff sound bigger and wider in a mix um, the only time that you want to effectively direct a signal is with EQ and uh, compressors on it because you want to actually revert I mean compressors and compressors and um, and uh, EQs are, are designed to affect signals directly. Um, even if you have all your sounds on separate channels and you group all those sounds to one particular group channel, to put an EQ and a compressor on the group still affects the signals directly, even in the group. That's why the board in more than the most part have auxiliaries to send out the to maybe for Q mixes, headphones, and also to send it to, to reverb units. And uh, so when you can send it out to reverb units, that allows you to blend the auxiliary signals with the original source. And that's you want to do that in your DAW as well. Other than that, you want to take all your channels that you're going to group, all your drums, and you want to group those to a group. All your instruments, like your bass, that can go to a group. Guitars can go to a group. And, uh, and keys can go to a group. And of course, vocals can go to a group. And then you can put EQs and compressors on the groups. And you can affect those. That's why we call bus compressors or group compressors. You send those signals to bus channels or group channels. So you send those to the bus channels, and then you put a, a reverb, or a, not a reverb, but a uh, compressor, um, compressor, EQs on the on the bus channels or bus ch compressors, bus EQs versus individual channel compressors, individual in channel EQs. And then when you're finally done, you can have your final master bus EQ, master bus, um, your master bus. EQ your master bus compressor and a lot of times sometimes people will just put uh, instead of running so many different types of reverbs because you can also sound funny if you're using a cathedral reverb a plate reverb and also you know hall reverb and all you get this weird you're trying to make it sound like it's in one cohesive room so that's why a lot of times a lot of people put just a 
reverb on the master bus to make it sound like since everything's going to have to go through the master bus, the master output, a lot of times they'll put the reverb on that to make it sound like everything's in the same room. So that's basically the console breakdown and how you're going to use, I got to check mine because I don't have a flip to see what, uh, how much time I got left. So that's the reason why the console's broken down the way it's broken down. So you, with your individual channels, your direct out so you can record to recording sources like your interface or tape machine. Your returns, or you can send it to a bus group and then send it out and bring it back in and uh, record to the buses. You can add compressors and EQs on each channel. Sometimes some some consoles have compressors, gates, and on the channels like an SSL, but most of them will have just EQ and auxiliaries, pans, and faders uh, with preamps. Most consoles are set up like that. Even the most pro analog consoles are set up that way. You have to accept. You have you know with the newer newer smaller consoles, they're going to have buses. But the old ones from the 70s, 80s, you had to create channels and make those buses. That's usually the difference. Um, in your DAW, it allows you to create, because DAWs start off as just empty platforms, empty templates. You create your bus channels, your auxiliary sins, you know, all that, as you create tracks, it creates channels. That's the only difference. And a lot of times, some DAWs, you have to create bus channels. And you have to create, um, you have to create, um, the master bus is always going to be there. Sometimes you just have to, sometimes the, your DAW will show the master on the mixer. Sometimes you have to hit certain keys to see the mixer. But the master is always, there's always a master bus in the DAW. But the other stuff you have to literally create, like your auxiliaries, your bus channels. But they're trying to get you to think like an how analog consoles work. The the problem, and I'm about done with the video. The problem with these these companies is they they don't understand that most people that never that do not work on a console do not know how to set up their DAW. So the DAW work like a console so that that it sound like like it's like professional tracks. Because they're not familiar with setting up the, the mixer in their DAW. Lots, I've seen people work out of the tracking window. That's the track where you get all the waveforms as you're recreating your tracks. And I've seen people put their plugins and all that on the waveform window, and that's not where you're supposed to be mixing. You're supposed to be mixing out of the out of the you're supposed to be mixing out of the mixer window in your DAW. And you're supposed to set it up like an analog console, and that way. Because your interface is designed to work how the the is programmed and it's programmed to they but the, the, the problem with these companies most of these companies will say you the dog they don't really care if you know how to do it or not. So that's the reason why I make my channel to try to get you to set so you can start thinking so that way your stuff will start sounding like all the millions of records you've heard over the last 24, 30, 40, 50 years of all the, the top artists you've ever heard are coming out of these commercial studios, the goal is to, to teach you how to set up your DAW in an analog console so you'll get the exact same results. Um, that's the reason why I make my channel. Um, other than that, that's going to do it for this video, and we'll keep making more. Thanks for watching.